Hi there everyone and welcome to the final part of the course. At this point it's a good idea to check if you still need to add some more pieces or if you want to leave the model as it is. As this is just a course to show you the techniques, we don't need to do a full suit of armour right now, just know that the process is always the same. So you could make some boots maybe using extract and then Z modeler and the various brushes. You could use um, elbow or knee shields. Maybe you could add some smaller pieces of armour on the breastplate. Obviously the more detail the better. You could even add some more detail to the actual breastplate, extruding some areas with the Z modeler. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll work on the actual breastplate. So we'll take the top part and we'll mark it with the Z modeler so that we can adjust these areas a little. With Alt, make a polygon selection and then extrude with Q mesh. Now we can add some cuts to this area for when we make the subdivision. At this point, we can subdivide quite a lot, uh, a four, five, for instance, and select the standard brush. And in the stroke window, we'll select this option, drag rectangle. This will leave the alphas marked on the surface pretty much like a stamp. So the more subdivisions, the more detail. Before anything, we need to add some roughness to the armour. So to do that, go to Deform, and in Noise, we'll select one point. Open the Alpha panel, and here you can start to upload some alphas that you might have yourself, or you can get them from the library. I'll include some in the attachment section of the course so you can practice with. So it really depends a lot on the alphas that we have available. But I think that a heraldic themed one might work pretty well. And on Freepik you can find various vectors like this. Then we can open them in Illustrator and take one of these vectors to Photoshop. And that's what I've done here. You can then save it in um, well as PNG or PSD. And import our brush into ZBrush. Import. OK. So we'll paint the armor with a metallic material. To do that, select the MRGB box and choose a metallic material. A white color. 
like this, and then select Fill Object. And this way we'll set the armor to this color. And we need to do the same for all the pieces. First, modify in Z Modeler to extrude the areas that you think are necessary. Then subdivide the model into four or five subdivisions. Then select the color and the material with M RGB option and then fill object. And this way we're adding more detail and we're painting at the same time. So this process is like the extract. It's simple, but it's a little laborious. That the idea, the aim, is to leave the pieces ready, uh, prepared, to then apply the alphas on the surface. Regarding the color and the materials, well, you can be as creative as you like. Now you can see that in the area of the skirts here, I've just gone joining the areas with merge. I just subdivide everything else and then apply the color. I didn't really like the chain, so I removed the excess parts and I adjusted it a little bit. On the belt, I used the rings that I made earlier to add some detail, some decoration. Okay. So now we have the armor painted on top. And what I'm going to do now is basically apply So apply these heraldic details that we selected before and also play around with different alphas to generate some scratches on the armor. So if we combine all of those functions together, we've got Z um, sub to take away material. We've got Z add to add material, RGB activated, all the different colors. Then using these alphas, we can add much more detail to the model. So I'll take the alpha that we made with the standard brush. And we can look for an area to place this alpha. So maybe on the shoulders, the shoulder pads could look good. Remember to add a color, for example, a black. Leave the material as it is as we only want to change the color, not the material. Let's see how it looks with symmetry activated. And maybe some more subdivision is needed. So we could add one more point. And as I said, more subdivisions we have, then the more detail that we have. Obviously, the more intensity the brush has, then the more visible the alpha will be. Now 
We could add another one here, for example. Now we'll lightly soften this area with a low intensity. Okay, I'll carry on adding some more alphas. I can add some, some more cuts, just adding some wear and tear to the armor. So I'll select some more alphas and import them. I could use these ones here. So open them, and there, as you see, we've got lots of alphas. So I'm basically going to do this with C. I'll select the color, and we just need to change the color slightly. So I'll select a darker one, and then with Z sub selected, just watch the intensity and choose an appropriate alpha. So this one here, for example, okay? I'll paint some areas to generate detail. You can download alphas on the Pixelogic page, although, as I've already said, I'll include some in the attachments section. I could also paint in some different areas, like the piece on the waist. By making a polygroup selection, then we can paint a piece in different colors, like part of the helmet, for example. I'll select different alphas to create some bumps and other effects. For the skirt area, we can slightly adjust the nanomesh. I'll leave this one, but you could try an interesting combination if you previously create a nanomesh like we did on the course. And I'm going to finish off by optimizing all the parts individually. And finally, I'll focus on the skirt area and the area of the waist. So just like when we created the armor, rather than showing you exactly, you can practice yourself by adding more alphas, varying the intensity of the brush, changing the color, etc. But you should end up with something like this. As you can see, the more subdivision, the more detail that we get. And actually, we end up with approximately 5 million polygons. So what we have now is useful to us as an illustration. And I've made this model in more or less the time that the course lasted. In future courses, we'll see how to take a model like this to a video game and optimizing it, generating a series of textures for this purpose. So it would be a good idea to save this model so that you can use it for other courses. And with that, we've reached the end of the course. You can carry on creating more pieces and details if you want, and I'll do the same to finish off this suit of armor. I really hope that you enjoyed this course and please share your own work in the project section. Keep an eye out on tootpad.com for some more courses. So I'll see you next time. Bye.